Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is great, great to be in the house of the Lord and uh, just been uh, walking with Him all day, talking with Him all day. How about you? I know sometimes you get caught up in work and the activities of life, but I'm glad He's always there. He's always at our side. And uh, the song we're going to sing is uh, Your Presence is Heaven. Is that the first one? Welcome, Holy Spirit. Ah. All right. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Inside of me, oh yes, my 
you, Lord of heaven. God is so good. Thank the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. There's no one like Him. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless worth. Amen. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Have you found that to be true? Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, yes. Yes, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. present wrongs. Thank God. Holder of my future days to come. Your presence is heaven to me. My 
Exciting, exciting. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. How many have had a chance to 
Uh, watch that video that I sent out yesterday regarding the love of God uh, by Bishop Wright. It is, uh, it is uh, an awesome understanding of the love of God. And uh, I'm, I am thankful that uh, it's just amazing how he put it together. You know, Brother Al and I were speaking before service how, you know, the devil comes at us with shame, he comes at us with um, we're unworthy and uh, we're not living up to his standards and so on and so forth. So it's always, it's always, the devil's word to us is always down, 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 down. But God's word, as the Bible says, God is love. Amen. And uh, he's chosen us. You didn't cho choose him, he chose you. Praise the Lord. Matter of fact, no one can come to the Father except He be lifted up and then He draws. And I just uh, appreciate so much it had such an impact uh, on my spirit to, to understand the love of God. And uh, especially the way He put it as we're going through life and the processes in life that He allows things to happen in our, in our lives to prove that love. Praise God. So our confidence would not be in man and our confidence would not be in this life, but our confidence would be solely and strictly in Him. Praise God. God is so good. I appreciate Him tonight. Amen. Do uh, continue to pray for Sister uh, Tiffany. Got a text right before we started service. She's in uh, rehab in uh, Fatima Hospital. And uh, so she just got there today. But uh, so far, so good. And I uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate uh, your prayers for her. Also, uh, Brother Mario, please remember uh, him, that the Lord's grace and strength would be upon him. Uh, in Jesus' name, those that uh, are not here tonight, that the Lord would uh, uh, bring to their remembrance the times and the seasons of which we live. Amen. You know, the Apostle Paul in Thessalonians said, uh, there's no need that I write to you, brethren, about the times and seasons or the times that we're living in. And uh, if you have any Holy Ghost, you surely can recognize that uh, uh, these are the times. Uh, I posted something on Facebook that who would imagine that 2 Timothy chapter 3 would unfold in this uh, way. And uh, the Bible says it's going to get worse. Praise God. But uh, I'm under the covering of my God. How about you? Amen. I'm dwelling in the secret place more often than not. Hallelujah. And I'm beginning to uh, look at life through His perspective, not through mine. When you can come to a place that you can do that, and uh, that there's a certainty about uh, his character, as uh, Bishop Wright said, the certainty of his character. Amen. I might have character flaws, but God doesn't have character flaws. And uh, he will keep us. Amen. Until that great day. Hallelujah. So as we go before the Lord in prayer, anyone have a special request they'd like to make known for the realm? Continue to work in his heart and his mind. Anyone else have a special needs or want to bring you for the Lord, sister? Yeah, my family and the families are the ones in helping. Her family and the families of those that she uh, works with. And uh, it's such a hurting world out there, church. Yes, sir. And uh, I pray that uh, the Lord would raise up uh, intercessors and travailers to uh, reach. Um, my wife and I had the privilege of meeting a, a gentleman the other Monday night, actually. And um, I happened to mention in our conversation of business, God is good. And he, he goes, you say God is good? I said, yes, sir. And he said, all the time. We just got to talking. And before we parted from him, I said, to Judy, let's pray. I put my hand on his shoulder and we prayed in Jesus' name. And it's just, uh, you know, the Lord's given us freedom, folks. He has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us freedom. And uh, we can have the freedom and uh, be led by His Spirit. And He's not going to lead us into a situation that would cause us danger or harm. Praise God. 
and uh, I thank the Lord for that. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the goodness, for the goodness that you have shown us. We thank you, Jesus, for calling us out of darkness, bringing us into your marvelous light as we lift our voice to you, as we praise you, my God. We bind every force of hell that would project a negative attitude, a negative spirit, Lord. The devil's a liar and the father of lies. We loose the joy of the Lord to be our strength here tonight. We loose, O oh God, your promise, which is yea and amen. We lift up Peter before you, Father, and ask that you continue to give the increase. We loose the spirit of the fear of the Lord upon those of our families, our loved ones that are lost. We loose the spirit of conviction of sin, that man would come to a place of repentance, Father. And look to the heavens and call upon you, Jesus. We pray, O oh God of heaven, that you minister to our families that are lost tonight, that you continue to do the work, Lord Jesus, through us, as you would lead us across the paths of individuals that you have chosen. We thank you, my God, that we live in such a time, Lord Jesus, where you can show yourself strong on our behalf. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your word is forever settled in heaven, that nothing can add to it, nothing can take away from it. We stand on your promise, my God. We stand on your word, my God, which is the sure foundation. We take the authority that you've given to us, Lord Jesus, the confidence that you've given to us, my God. We loose the kingdom of heaven upon the earth, Lord, to be active and manifest in the body of Christ. I loose the gifts of the Spirit, Lord Jesus, in the body of Christ. I loose the fruit of the Spirit, Father, to be manifested in the body of Christ, that your name would be exalted and glorified and magnified and revered. We command the darkness to fall from the eyes of the lost. O oh Lord, that you would transfer them from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God. And transfer them, transform them, Lord, into children of the Most High. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name, Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you continue to do the work, continue to have your way, for it is your kingdom, your power, and your glory that we are gathered here in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise our God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your glory, your praise, your reverence. Amen. As we receive our offering tonight, Father in heaven again, we thank you for your provision. Asking, Lord, that you would give us the kingdom resources, Father, needed to accomplish and do your will. I pray you'd raise up laborers amongst us, Father. That you would thrust laborers into the harvest field, Lord Jesus. And you'd use us, Father, to seek and to save that which is lost. Bless our, our giving, Father. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come if you would tonight. God bless you as you come cheerfully. Amen. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. No place I'd rather be. No place. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Here in your love, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. How many want more of him tonight? Oh, yes. I want more of you, God. Oh, yes, Jesus, send the fire. Baptize us with fire, my God, in Jesus' name. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be. Amen. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, than here in 
your love, here in your love. No oh yes, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. No Thank you, my God. No Thank you, my God. Here in your love, here in your love. Praise God. Yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus, yes. Jesus, yes. Amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, it is great to see everyone here tonight. God bless you in your journey. We pray grace, peace, and mercy over you. Pray that he would strengthen you with might by His Spirit and your inner man. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, what God is going to do in our midst. And I uh, just appreciate uh, His Spirit in my life. Uh, I appreciate His Word. Bye. And uh, as I was in prayer, I was considering or, or thinking about um, John chapter 17, the Gospel of John chapter 17. And uh, even Jesus had to pray. You know, sometimes uh, that confuses people. That well, he's God. Why, why in the world? Why in the world he had to pray? Well, the answer is found in Psalms chapter sixty-five and verse two. It says that all flesh. Everybody say all flesh. All flesh, all flesh uh, comes to the Father. And uh, even though he was the man Christ Jesus, God manifested in the flesh, he was flesh. And he, uh, he came in verse 1 of John chapter 17. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. And I believe that's important when you start to... to you know, work your way through uh, this chapter, that the sole purpose of Jesus Christ as He walked on the earth was to magnify or glorify God. And uh, everything He did was God-centered. Everything He said was God-centered. And I think sometimes, you know, I, I look at, you know, the church uh, individually, collectively, and you know, the things that we're involved in and the things that occupy our time and occupy our, our religious life. And uh, I wonder percentage-wise how much really brings glory to God. And we're conscious conscious of uh, the things that we're doing. You know, are, are we doing it to create another program? Are we doing it to, uh, to uh, you know, have the spotlight on us? Um, are we not doing it because... Everything as a child of God we should be doing should be we should be doing to bring glory to the to Almighty God. And he says in verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I am so thankful that we as a body, as an assembly of believers, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. In Jude verse 3, Jude felt the urgency to pen the words and write that, uh, you know, that I, I just felt the need to, to express or to write to you that uh, you earnestly contend to the faith that was once delivered to the saints. There's a lot of churches that we could be at. A lot of, a lot of places we could go at. We could probably find a different church for every day of the week, 365 days a year. And, uh, Doctrinally, some of them have elements of truth. Uh, somebody the other day uh, mentioned something that we don't need doctrine to me. And it was like, we don't need doctrine. Uh, and and uh, I think I responded respectfully, you do err, E-R-R, -R, not knowing the scripture. Uh, because Paul said, talked about doctrine in Timothy. That uh, doctrine is designed to mature us. Doctrine is in, it's designed to instruct us. You know, word doctrine just means teaching. How can you how can you walk with God without teaching, without the study of the word, the application of the word to an individual's life? And uh, I'm thankful for the word of God. And more importantly, I'm thankful that I know who Jesus is. 
Amen. And it is a revelation. The Bible says, No man knows who the Father is but the Son, who the Son is but the Father, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And so the point that Jesus was making is that we can know God. Amen. He's the Father of creation, the Son in redemption, and the Holy Ghost in regeneration. Praise the Lord. And uh, I and my Father in one, are one. And in John 14, Jesus said, The Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost. Uh, and he talks about the name of the Holy Ghost is G being Jesus. And Jesus said, I've come in my Father's name. So the Father's name is Jesus. And I'm thankful for that revelation. And I'm thankful that it is a revelation of God, not an opinion of an organization or, a, or an opinion of man. And I found that those that, that truly seek that relationship with God and, and kind of tune out the voices and quite frankly tune out some of the some of the, the, the religious doctrines that are out there and they find themselves in His presence talking with Him, wanting to get to know Him, asking Him to re reveal themselves to Him, that God will reveal Himself to those that ask. God will reveal Himself. Jesus said, if you knock and keep on knocking, I will open the door. If you ask and keep on asking, I, uh, I'll answer you. Praise God. You see, sometimes we pray and it's seemingly the answers don't come. reason why it doesn't come, I think it's James that says we ask amiss. You know, if our life is not lined up, kingdom-mindedness, everything we do is towards Him, for Him, about Him, for His kingdom, for His glory, then it gives me a free open door for me to ask Him whatever I want. And when there's a breakdown there and I'm, I'm asking, I'm talking about asking Him relative to kingdom relative to the salvation of souls. If I'm not involved at all with witnessing, uh, teaching Bible study, uh, inviting people to church, uh, you might not be able to teach a Bible study, but you're trying to, you know, trying to get somebody in, in connected with Jesus. If you and I are not involved at all in any of that, what right do I have to ask Him for anything? Because the whole catalyst, the whole purpose of Jesus coming was to seek and to save that which is lost. And there's people that are involved in work and people that are involved with life and people that are you know, too busy to be involved in kingdom ministry or anything to do with the kingdom. I mean, if all the kingdom is is for me to maintain my walk with God, my prayer life, my Bible and, and everything else, I've got it wrong. You've got it wrong. Because Jesus, the purpose He saved us, is to use us to reach someone that doesn't know Him. And so, yes, I might be busy, but I can surely pray, and I can surely ask God to uh, give me the sensitivity of people around me so I can do everything that I can to be sensitive to the cry of their human soul. And, and it works. Like I said uh, earlier, when my wife and I were standing, and, uh, and, there was, and I had been sensing it, uh, b before we even uh, uh, finished the transaction that, that there's something about this guy. Some, you know, the Holy Ghost was already stirring on the inside. And you'll find that happening. How many know what I'm talking about? You'll find that happening when your focus is kingdom. Kingdom ministry. He came to build His kingdom. And He's going to thrust laborers into His kingdom. Now you might say, well, you know, I, I don't go any place or I don't run into so, so many people. Talk to Jesus about that. Trust me when I say He can change that. He can. Praise the Lord. Whether you're, everybody goes shopping at a supermarket. <laughs> Hello. Amen. How many ever run into somebody and the Holy Ghost spoke to you about somebody who was standing in line or, or, or just a little tiny open door or, or, or just a word or, or a statement that, that, that opens up and, and gives you opportunity. Amen. Praise God. Sister Tiffany was telling me she was listening to preaching in her room last night at the hospital. and uh, I don't know how this person came in or whatever, but her, heard the preaching and, and quoted a scripture or something like that. And next thing you know, she's given them my phone number and, and, uh, and uh, contact church times and all that other stuff. That's how it is. And that's all you have to do. We, we think that, we, man, i got to give them a 24-week Bible study and, and i got to preach to them and i got to do that. No, a thousand times no. You'll ever see how small a, a tomato seed is or, or, or any kind of plant seed. It starts small. All God wants you and I to do is plant the seed. He's the one that gives the increase. 
Or you might be one that comes and waters that seed that somebody else planted. Praise God. Some men plant, some men water. God is the one that gives the increase. So I don't get frustrated when people... Uh, I ended up texting somebody uh, uh, our YouTube channel today and, and I felt led of the Holy Ghost to do it. I said, whether he responds... as my exact words to the Lord. Whether he responds to not, that's your business, not mine. I, I didn't, there was no heaviness. There was no weight on my shoulders. I, I wasn't trying to perform. I wasn't like, oh, oh, please, please, please. No, a thousand times no. I planted a seed. What God does with that seed is His business. Amen. Praise God. So Jesus' quest was to do the will of the Father. In verse 5 he says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory that I had, which, which, uh, which thee before the world was. Not that Jesus existed before the world, world was. Yes, in the mind of Christ, he, in the mind of God He existed. He was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world because Almighty God had a plan in the very beginning that He was going to robe Himself in flesh and offer Himself as a sacrifice for the sins of man. So in that sense, in the mind and the plan of God, a Savior, a lamb, a sacrifice was predetermined. Praise God. I have manifested Your name unto the men which Thou gavest Me out of the world. Thine they were, and Thou gavest them Me and they have kept thy word. How many people you think are hidden that God's dealing with and God's going to bring to the surface before this is all over? Come on, somebody. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that out of the 77, 79,000 people in this city, God has a remnant. Hello? God has a remnant of people that He is speaking to working in and directing, praise God, and when His timing is right, when His season is right, He's going to bring them to the surface, praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm thankful tonight that uh, God has manifested His name to me, and I'm able to manifest His name to someone else, that He doesn't leave us uh, on our own, to work on our own ability. I know sometimes we feel, oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Get full of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost will tell you what to do. Frustration always happens when I'm trying to do it on my own power, in my ability, and in my will. You will get frustrated. But when I do it in His power and in His ability and according to His will, I'm convinced He can tell us what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it. That's exactly what God wants to do in our lives. He wants us to be conduits that He can flow through and He'll tell us where to go, tell us what to do, tell us how to do it, give us the instruction we need so we don't have to fret, we don't have to worry. When you're at peace and you constantly cast your cares upon Him, you don't worry about results. Praise God. And Jesus was able to say, you know, I read some of that and I say, yeah, wait a minute, didn't Peter deny him three times? And, and didn't this one do that? And this one this do, do that? Yeah, we're human. We're going to make mistakes. Yes, Guess what? How many times have you fallen since you've come to the faith? Praise God. But by His grace, Dominic, He gets us back up again. Brushes us off and says, come on, son, you can do this. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank God it wasn't a one-shot deal that you, you do this or else. Thank God His blood still flows from Calvary. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now I have known, now they have known that all things whatsoever Thou hast given me are of Thee. For I have given unto them the words, everybody say the words, the words, the words which Thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from Thee. And they have believed that Thou didst send me. Thank God for the Word of God. His Word is forever settled in heaven. His Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's His Word that keeps us going. It's His Word that we build the relationship on. It's His Word that we filter everything we do from the thoughts that we have to the actions that we do. It's His Word that we look to. It's His Word. It's His Word. It's His Word. Praise God. And when you keep the Word and you apply the Word and you know the Word, Please, please, please don't take man's word for the word. Because there's a lot of people 
that just take it for granted because an individual has a stature of life or initials after their names or their degrees that are, are even experiences that they've manifested. People take their word as truth. But is not this the only truth? Amen. Is not this the guide of truth? The plumb line of truth? Praise God. Amen. How many people are going to spend eternity lost because they took somebody's word for their salvation? There's a lot of churches out there, folks, that don't teach baptism in Jesus' name as an essential part of the salvation plan. But Jesus said in John 3, except a man be born of water and of spirit, you're not going to heaven. And, and, and some will say, well, you know, they'll make some story or some excuse on, on what that really means. And then you say, okay, show me that in the Bible. Show me in the Scripture where people just believed in the Lord and they were saved. It's not in there. You don't find it. Show me in the, show me in the book of Acts where the Holy Ghost would, would, wasn't poured out soon after people came in contact with the Lord or where people weren't told to be baptized soon after the Holy Ghost was given to them. It's pretty plain and simple to me. Praise God. But the devil is a liar and he is a deceiver and the Bible says that in these last days people would not endure sound doctrine but they would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Tell me what I want to hear, preacher. Uh, make it sound like everybody else. God doesn't want us to be like everybody else. Amen. Amen. I mean, we don't have to hammer away people that may not believe doctrinally the way we do and, and get arrogant and get ugly about it. Ask the Holy Ghost to give you words of wisdom, to speak to them, to, to lead them along, to share your faith or share... Oh boy, you know when I run into people, Brother Allen, that haven't gotten the Holy Ghost, I say to and they're believers, I say, man, do you have an experience waiting for you? Wait, when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it'll be like heaven on earth. You want to wet their whistle. We're the salt of the earth. You, you want to make them thirsty. Wow. And, and if the fire is down inside of you and you've got joy and you've got a, a smile on your face and you can share the goodness of they're going to want what you have. Amen. Praise God. People followed Jesus everywhere He went. So much so He had to hide from them. How many are hiding from folks that are looking for you because of your relationship with Jesus? My hands down too. But isn't that how it should be? If we truly have living water, do we have it all bottled up and we just kind of keep it to ourselves and go about our day just kind of doing our thing? Uh, another day to think about Jesus. Another day to go to work. Another day to do this. And then there's no effort. There's no desire. There's no connection with the Holy Ghost. There's no compassion for the loss. I mean... You're seeing the headlines. You're seeing the news. Does it bring tears to your eyes? Yes, it's a repulsive to us. But does it bring tears to your eyes? Does it bring compassion? Does something rise up inside of you? Watching these people shoot each other, kill each other, uh, hammer away at each other. The language, the, uh, you know, the vitriol, everything that they're doing, the, the assaults, the, 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 everything they're doing. Yes, it's offensive. And yes, you and I can stick our head in the sand and say, oh, oh, that is so bad. I pray that's not, and I pray we don't stop there. I pray that when we're in prayer and we're war warring on Tuesdays, into Wednesdays and, and, and just just bombarding heaven's throne. We allow the Holy Ghost to rise up with us to combat some of that darkness, to combat some of the some of what Satan is doing to humanity. Jesus. Verse 9. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Notice that. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. We don't pray for the world, folks. We pray for souls. Right. We pray for people. I'm beginning to see more and more that God has a plan. God has allowed this pandemic, and He's allowed all of the, these troubles and this 
whirlwind, all the churches that are, you know, we all probably heard about that Baptist preacher in, in uh, California that, that fined $10,000 because he decided to have two services. They fined him $5,000 per service. I mean, the, the guy, I think he said, they've bust 1.5 million people through the years in and out of his church. They got a school, they got a fleet of buses, they, you know, well known in, in the community. So there is an all out assault, friend, against Christianity. Who, I saw somebody posted, who would, have, who would ever dream that it'd be against the law to go to church? Or against the law to sing? Right now we're fortunate. Nobody's busting our door down. We can sing, we can preach, we can do what we want. It's coming. It'll make its way here. But God has to get this world to the place where people begin to call out upon Him. And He's placed you and I to be... I remember being at a call to war and uh, as we prayed, uh, one brother that the Lord gives him, a, he has the gifting of, of being able to see in the spirit realm. And he was saying that as, as we warned and as we prayed, there were angels going from heaven to, he could see the earth and they were being just, it, it was almost like sparklers going, going to the north, going to the south, going to the east, going to the west, all over the world. God was dispatching angels into these geographic areas. I've never seen anything like that. Brother Mike, I believe it. I believe it with all of my heart. And there have been angels dispatched on more than one occasion to our area. Praise God. When we stood to the east and prayed and asked the Lord to, to dispatch the angels of heaven to here. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of spiritual activity that is going on that you and I do not see in the physical realm. But I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the stirring in the Holy Ghost. I'm feeling the urgency of the hour in the Holy Ghost. And if you're not feeling that, please get connected with Jesus. Please just don't, just don't mark time with prayer or put time in prayer. But let your time of prayer be a, a time of intimacy with Him. A, a time of, of connecting with the Holy Ghost. Connecting with His Spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost as He would, as he would lead you. He said, I pray for them, I don't pray for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. God is get, going to get glorified in us. He, no flesh, he said, will glory in his presence. And so he allows things to happen in my life, and happen in your life, that may bring pain, and may, be, may bring... Uh, pruning. Everybody say pruning. pruning. We don't like the pruning process. I heard Brother Wright say today, he said, he said, people that are truly spiritual go through constant seasons of pruning. You know why? Because he knows the weakness of the flesh. And if we're going to experience the power of God in our lives as God moves through us, to do what He wants to do. He knows the danger of our flesh. Our flesh can very, very easily claim credit for it. Very easily say, oh wow, look at me. You know, look, oh, look what I'm doing. And so He's always going to be pruning. He's always going to be keeping us in check. He's always going to bring us to a place where He says, <clears throat> it's me that's your strength. It's me that's given you this. It's me that's allowed you to do this and have this and, and do that. It's matter of fact, it's me that gives you the breath to get up and wake up in the morning. Praise God. And now I am no more in the world, Jesus said in verse 11. But these are in the world and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through, the, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, verse 12, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, meaning Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my, my joy fulfilled in themselves. 
That's why the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And my mind and my thoughts can steal that joy. Activities, circumstances, situations can take away that joy. Amen. It's just sometimes, uh, sometimes you almost wish you weren't human because the human side of us uh, doesn't see things the way God sees them. The human side of us uh, looks so differently at what God's Word says and the promises that He gives to us. But Jesus said it right here. I'm giving them joy. I'm giving them joy. I'm giving them Your Word. The world hates them because they're not of the world even as I am not of the world. When you understand this prayer time that Jesus had after He prayed, it wasn't too soon after that that He found Himself in the Garden of Gethsemane of them coming to arrest Him. Uh, I think at 9 o'clock in the morning and by, uh, by the end of the next day He was, he was crucified. But from ver chapter 17 on, something changed in Jesus after He prayed this prayer. And maybe the Lord is trying to tell us tonight, reread chapter 17 slowly. Talk to the Lord as you read. Ask Him, how, how is this applied to, to me? Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Ask God to check you. Ask God to, to take an inventory with you. Ask God if there's any uh, unrepentant sin in your life. Ask God if... if your will is in more control than His will. You don't advance in getting in contact or coming close to Him when there's grudges in your life or when there's unrepentant sin in your life or you, or you haven't cast your cares upon Him. There's four things that we need to do every time we come into the presence of the Lord. It, it clears the way. It, it opens the door. And it's refreshing when you, when you do it and you, you're able to sit before Him and you understand His purpose and that His Word is truth. Jesus, there was such a peace about Jesus. Even when He stood before Pilate and was being accused, didn't even open His mouth. You see, there's times, friend, that you just need to get away and be with the Lord. And God will give you a peace that passes all understanding. Jesus said in verse 20, I, I don't pray for just these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou art, thou Father art in me and I in thee. They also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou hast uh, gave me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Verse 25, O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. You talk about a confidence. You talk about security. You talk about a foundation that he was built upon. Even to the point where he was able to say, Not my will, but thine be done. Flesh wanted to pass the cup of Gethsemane and the cross. But he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. If we can grasp the spirit of Jesus' prayer that's recorded in John chapter 17, God will give us such a peace. He will give us such confidence in who we are in relationship to Him and who He is in relationship to us. He loves us, folks. He didn't design this for us to fail. He, he didn't. He didn't design us to, to find some dark hole somewhere and crawl into it. I've been there sometimes, and I, I thank God that He's able to pull us out of there. 
Sometimes you're going to just cast down the imaginations, Brother Mike, and right. capture your thoughts to, to what the Word says and what He says. It'll never fail. Never, never, never. It'll never fail. It's a sure thing. Praise God. This isn't some dream or some fairy tale that we believe in. Hallelujah. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk day by day, one step at a time, one event at a time, one minute, one second at a time. Because we never know what's around the next corner. We wake up and we say, thank you, Jesus. As Brother Hurst said on Saturday, I, you live until you die. You live until you die. You realize you've got an appointment? Yes, sir. I've got an appointment. We don't know when that appointment's going to be fulfilled. Stand with me if you would. God has such a tremendous plan for us. And I'm convinced that if during these times of pandemic and restrictions and chaos, if during these times we will seek Him to use us to reach the loss, to use us to have a word of encouragement and hope to give to somebody. If you will seek Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, there's no doubt in my mind that there's people in your circle of life that He speaks to that will pick up the Bible that normally would have rejected and make a phone call and say, Hey, I read the Word yesterday. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I think Jesus talked about compelling people to, to come in and I confess to you that there are times when I've neglected that. But it's in the Word. And the time, night is far spent and the day is at hand. And I believe that there are hungry people that are searching, looking. And sometimes the door opens up for us and, and they might show an interest. Do everything in your power to make that connection. Praise God. Do what you got to do to, to try to uh, make a connection with them and, and, and uh, be able to either uh, share the word or share your testimony or take a moment to pray for them. Praise God. He will not send people our way if we're going to ignore them. He will not. But I pray, Father, tonight in Jesus' name your spirit Lord Jesus and your purpose you came to seek and to save that which was lost we sometimes don't understand our purpose my God we spend more time maintaining our own relationship with you and keeping our salvation polished rather than considering others father and looking upon the harvest field and realizing that it is white ready to harvest Forgive us for all the excuses we make on why we can't, why we haven't. And I pray, Lord, as we get deeper into these end times, that the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire would come upon us, Lord Jesus. We'd look upon the fields with compassion. We'd look upon the sheep, my God, as sheep without a shepherd. We pray, Lord, you'd use us in these last days. You promised us in your word that we would be empowered. We humble ourselves before your mighty hand and we ask, O oh God, that you would direct our path. We pray for wisdom, for understanding of the times, so we know what we ought to do. I pray for every family represented here, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would breathe upon the seed that we planted in our loved ones that are not saved tonight. I pray, my God, that it would germinate by your breath. I pray you would lead us to pray in the Holy Ghost and war against the demonic influences in their lives. We pray that the spirit of the fear of the Lord would fall upon every son, every daughter, every brother, every sister, every mother, every father, every wife, every husband, every grandchild. Bring them to that place, O oh God, because without the fear of the Lord there will be no repentance. I pray, Father, your protective hand upon us as we travel from this house. Bring us back safely. Send somebody across our path, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. 
And everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.